Hey everyone, so I'm going to go over this getting started with XAPI in four lines of code tutorial. And so what this is, is it's just a simple website that when you click a button, it sends an XAPI statement to the LRS that you have set up. And you can use any LRS that you want. Um, for this one, I'm going to be using Yet Analytics LRS and they've got a trial version at I think it's trial.yetanalytics.io. So you can go ahead and sign up there. Um, I'm already logged in so you can see mine. So I've already gone ahead and altered this code quite a bit, um, which I'm not gonna go over that in this video, but I just wanna show you kind of what it's gonna look like. So um, with, the, with the project that we're working on, it's, there's only gonna be one button that sends a statement, and this is what we're going to be creating, just one. So when you click on this button here, and you go about, back over to your, your LRS, you're gonna see um, that someone experienced a button. Um, it's gonna look a little bit different because I already had altered the code a bit to add in an agent um, and different things like that. But I'm just gonna go over this here that um, Anthony has put together just so you can get a little bit of a view from a visual standpoint on how to get everything set up. So I'm gonna um, exit out of these. So the first thing that you're gonna to need to get started is something like a code text editor. I use a free one called Sublime Text, but there's tons out there. It just makes it easier to read your code. So all we're gonna need for this is a code text editor, a LRS, and then um, we're gonna need some files from GitHub that make everything work together. So, and, and obviously this, this post here. So if you go through this post, um, there's a few steps, but we're gonna kind of skip all the steps and I'm just gonna go through actually putting everything together. And then at the end, he has another one just with video, but we're not gonna do that one today. So all of the code that we need is exactly right here. So I can go ahead and copy all of this and then I'm gonna add that to a Sublime text document. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Just to show you, and typically I'd use my command line for this, but that's um, gonna be something extra that I don't need to, to show anyone. So we're just gonna do it kind of like the old fashioned manual way. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new folder and I'll just title it something like XAPI Anthony tutorial. And then within that folder, I'm going to go ahead and create my sublime text document with Anthony's code. So I'm gonna open a new document, paste all of that in, get rid of that. Make sure um, you're saving it as a .html document. I'm gonna get rid of that there. So you wanna make sure everything, everything looks right here. Um, if you've got that line there, delete that out after copying it. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And then I don't wanna save it to there. I wanna save it to my new one, but I'm just gonna add it to desktop and I'll just call it index.html. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that in to this folder here. Sorry, this is a bit of a wonky way of doing things. All right, so we've got that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And literally what Anthony's saying is there's like only four lines of code that we need to change. And really for his tutorial, there really is only about four lines of code that we need to change. So the first thing that we are going to change are these two script tags here. As you can see, it's pointing to two different JavaScript files that we actually don't have in here. So we need to be able to go and get those files. So that's where we're going to go to GitHub to get them. So we're looking for this crypto.js, which is going to like automatically um, base64 encode our, our username and password. Don't worry about that. If you don't understand it, we'll get a little bit more into it later. And then the XAPI wrapper.js, which really makes all of the XAPI magic happen. So what we're gonna do is go and grab those two files. So I wanna head over to um, ADL's GitHub here, and they have like all the, these files, and it's it can get a little bit confusing if you come here and you see all this stuff, and there's all this text and all these files. Really, for this project, we only need two files that are in here, and so just because um, I want to use the XAPI wrapper, I'm thinking I'm going to use the minified version because we're not ra really actually editing the XAPI wrapper itself. So if I go into this dist folder. 
I can see that, that, that this is here. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna grab this. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to clone or download. And if you're familiar with the command line, you can do this through your command line. I'm just gonna download the zip because that's gonna be probably what's easiest for most people. And then this is downloading this whole entire directory here. So everything is getting downloaded. So if I go into this and open it, go ahead and delete that. Um, I'm gonna go into that file there and grab this. So I wanna grab this and copy this into our folder here. Now best practice would be to put this within a folder that's like assets and JavaScript and all that, but I'm just gonna paste this in here for now. And then we want another one, which is our crypto one. And I think that is, let's see where that is. I'm trying to remember, is it in the library? Yeah. So we're gonna grab it from the library and we're gonna copy that. So you wanna make sure you have this as well. And then this one is titled v3.1.2. So let's see what he has in here. 3.1.2, okay, cool. And so we don't have these with any in any kind of folder. So we're just going to sit, call to them like right where they are, which is right in this um, folder here. So then we wanna make sure that this one is the minified version. So we gotta retitle this to minified.js. All right, so we're ready to go with our scripts. So those scripts are just gonna make everything work together. Um, so it's like all this extra stuff that we don't need to write ourselves, which makes it really easy. Now, the second part of this that Anthony talks about that we need to change is our, um, our variable conf equals. So that's where our LRS comes in and we need to change this endpoint out right here. So whatever LRS you're in, you're gonna have an endpoint. You're always gonna have an endpoint and that's why it doesn't really matter which LRS you choose, it's gonna work either way. So you can use any kind of trial that you have or if you have your own LRS, that's cool too. Um, so I'm gonna go back to Yet. And with Yet Analytics, you can create several different instances of LRSs so your data can go to different ones. So I'm gonna create a new one and I'm just gonna say Anthony's tutorial. Um, this is just a test and create it. And then when I go into that, you can see we don't have anything happening in here. It's completely blank and that's good because we wanna test this um, in a separate place. And then if we wanna retire it later, we can retire it and just that means we're not gonna use it. So this is just for a test. So what I'm gonna do in order to get that endpoint information that I'm talking about um, right here is go into yeah, analytics here and then click on info. And then that's gonna be where all of our important information is. So the, the important information is going to be these three here. And so this here is where we're getting our information for our endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And the one thing that you wanna make sure that you have here is it doesn't have that, that um, backslash on the end of it. So what you wanna make sure is to add that back, back, backslash in or else it's not gonna work. So there's like these little intricacies with um, when you're working with scripts or doing anything where you just need to, to know those types of things. Like you, you have to have a backslash in there for some reason or another. Then the second part that you're gonna need in here to get everything to work is you want the username and the um, secret, so like the password. So this is gonna be your username here, and then right after it's gonna be this colon, and then the password is gonna be here. And so what that's doing, what this code is doing is basically it's encoding it. So it's using this um, JavaScript that is, uh, oh geez, sorry, syntax issues. Um, the the Crypto.js is going to basically say, take what I have in this and like turn it into the basic auth, like the encoded basic auth. So we really do need that too. So where we're gonna grab that from is in here as well. So this API key here, that's going to be your um, username. And then the API key secret is going to be the password. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna get rid of this xapi-tools and I'm gonna go ahead and post that um, username in there. And I'm gonna keep the colon, make sure you keep the colon or else it's not gonna work. And then I'm gonna go back into the LRS here, grab the secret, and then I'm gonna go ahead with that and do the same thing. So we've got to make sure that 
you like sometimes you can't tell there's like extra spaces make sure that everything looks exactly like this or it's just not going to work all right so cool so that's all we needed to really do and then anthony has everything else set up for us so the way that he has everything in here is this statement here is what's going to be sent to the lrs itself you don't really have to worry about that but if you want to change it you can change it to different things um so in my example, I had changed the mbox to a specific variable. So I wanted that to be a specific variable. So this is already set up and then there's a button here. So this button that you see is, um, it executes this function called send statement. And we'll see where that is, which is right here. So it's connecting to the LRS and then it's running through this, this information here that's filling in the um, XAPI statement for the LRS. So we can do this in various different ways outside of this, but this should work for um, for this specific example. And this is just kind of like a gateway into getting into XAPI. Um, what I'm gonna do after this tutorial is edit this statement here so that it passes parameters so that we can create tons of different um, statements more easily and not have to write all this out every single time. So um, let's go ahead and, and test our example right now. Hopefully it works. And I apologize if it doesn't because I haven't really run through this um, too much before. So what you want to do is go back into your folder and open your index.html. And then we're going to see if that works. So we have our send statements here. And so one of the best things that you can do to test for, for bugs and different things is to pull out your inspector. And I use Google Chrome, so you wanna go to the little um, more button on the right hand side here. And if you go to more tools and go to developer tools, this is where you can kind of see in the console if something's going wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click send statements. And so we've got this little message here, we can ignore that and like, let's see, let's hopefully it shows in here. There we go, easy, easy peasy. It works out super well. So um, in yet, you'll, you can um, customize your activity stream. So if I wanna see, say, what the actor's inbox is, and this is what Anthony has in there, you can see that, um, the actor name. So um, this, this is just left over from an old one, so you can just ignore um, the definition name. Um, it's just caching from something else that I had on here. Uh, but basically, this, this should work really well. So that's all you really need for Anthony's tutorial. And I'll go ahead and um, do another video on customizing things so you can scale them a little bit um, more in these types of situations.